The present problem simulates the effect of an earthquake on a dam using ANSYS Fluent software. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFD training videos by Mr. CFD. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Mr. CFD logo and subscribe. There are two formulations for volume fraction parameters. Explicit formulation and implicit formulation. Actually, implicit schemes take on the following forms. First, time dependent with the implicit interpolation scheme. This formulation can be used if you are looking for a steady state solution and you are not interested in the intermediate transient flow behavior. But the final steady state solution is dependent on the initial flow conditions and or you don't have a distinct inflow boundary for each phase. Second, steady state with the implicit interpolation scheme. This formulation can be used if you are looking for a steady state solution, you are not interested in the intermediate transient flow behavior, and the final steady state solution is not affected by the initial flow conditions, and there is a distinct inflow boundary for each phase. Note that the implicit modified HRIC scheme can be used as a robust alternative to the explicit geometric reconstruction scheme. And about the implicit body forces. Actually, when large body forces, for example gravity or surface tension forces, exist in multiphase flows, the body force and pressure gradient terms in the momentum equation are almost in equilibrium with the contribution of convective and viscous terms small in comparison. Segregated algorithms uh, converge uh, poorly unless partial equilibrium of pressure gradient and body forces is taken into account. Access fluent provides an optional implicit body force treatment uh, that can account the, uh, for this effect, making the solution more robust. The next step was to choose the interface modeling type. The following options are available for interface modeling type in fluent. Sharp. When a distinct interface is present between the phases. Dispersed. When the phases are interpenetrating. Sharp dispersed. A hybrid approach for flows composed of both sharp and dispersed interfaces. This option can also be used to capture mildly sharp interfaces. Mildly sharp interfaces are those that are neither as sharp as uh, would be captured by the schemes available with the sharp option, nor as diffused as would be captured uh, by the schemes available with the dispersed option. And the last parameter that has been changed uh, is the volume fraction cutoff. This parameter allows us to specify a cutoff limit for the volume fraction values. The value that we provide is used as the lower cutoff uh, for the volume fraction. All volume fraction values in the uh, domain below this cutoff value are set to zero. The upper cutoff is calculated as one dash lower cutoff and all volume fraction values above the upper cutoff value are set to one. In this window, you must specify your phases. In fact, you can define any of the materials uh, that you have defined as fluid in the fluent material section as a phase. Because there is no phase interaction in this project, we didn't set anything in this tab. We use the standard k-epsilon model with the standard wall function as the turbulence model in this project. Actually, the simplest complete models of turbulence are the two equation models in which the solution of two separated transport equations allows the turbulent velocity and length scale to be uh, independently determined. The standard k-epsilon model in ANSYS Fluent falls within this class of models and has become the workhorse of practical engineering flow calculations in the time. 
Robustness, economy, and reasonable accuracy for a wide range of turbulent flows explain the popularity in industrial flow and heat transfer simulations. It is a semi-empirical model and the derivation of the model equations relies on phenomenological considerations and empiricism. The standard wall functions are provided as a default option in ANSYS Fluent. The standard wall functions work reasonably well for a broad range of wall-bounded flows. However, they tend to become less reliable when the flow situations depart from the ideal conditions that are assumed in their derivations. Among others, the constant shear and local equilibrium assumptions are the ones that must restrict the universality of the standard wall functions. Accordingly, when the near wall flows are subjected to severe pressure gradients and when the flows are in strong non-equilibrium, the quality of the predictions is likely to be compromised. For the up boundary, like the outlet, we use the pressure outlet boundary type and uh, everything in this window is uh, same as the outlet. Also, for both walls, we use the wall boundary type with the stationary wall for wall motion and no slip for shear condition. In this section, you must select a variable for the variables field. You must also select the surface from the surfaces list uh, on which you want to have variable values. Also, you must enter the name uh, in the box below the name. And if you enable the report file, you can have the uh, values in the text file during the solution and uh, if you uh, enable the report plot you can have the graph of uh, values uh, in the window during the solution and if you uh, enable the print to console uh, the values uh, will be printed in the console box during the solution In this section, I want to explain you how uh, you can draw the contours of any variable you want. Double click on the contours. In this window, you must to choose the variable that you want to have the contour from it. Also, you must choose the surfaces that you want to have the contour on them. Then, click on the save and display. In this window, choose the format for your picture, coloring mode, and set the size, and then click on the save. At the end of the solution process, three-dimensional contours related to the volume fraction of each water and air phase are obtained. Then, using the Easy Surface tool and considering the volume fraction value equal to 0.5 for each of the water and air phases, a three-dimensional image of the water flows free surface is obtained. According to the image obtained from the free surface of the water flow, it can be said that the water flow has been completely affected by the earthquake and has become entirely turbulent. The pressure, velocity, and kinetic energy contours of turbulence are obtained on this water's free surface. The study of changes in pressure and velocity on the water's free surface also shows an earthquake's effect. These contours correspond to the last second of the simulation process or the final moment of the earthquake. Furthermore, two-dimensional contours related to static pressure and uh, wall tension on the ground surface and the dam's surface have been obtained. Also, a graph of change in the mean static pressure on the dam's surface over the time is obtained.
This table is an overview of the methods used in this simulation. In this table, you can see the models used, boundary conditions, discretization methods, and initialization. Obtain the mesh file and also the full training movie by purchasing this product. To benefit from Mr. Dash CFT services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at sign Mr. Dash CFT.com www.mr-cfd.com